What did scientists just discover about 3i Atlas that's rewriting everything we thought we knew about interstellar visitors? Right now, as you watch this video, an ancient traveller from another star system is racing through our cosmic neighbourhood, and what NASA just detected is sending shockwaves through the scientific community. This object has been frozen in the darkness of interstellar space for 7 billion years, and the signals it's releasing are unlike anything we've ever seen from a comet. What's really going on here? How is this even possible? Every new observation reveals another mystery, another piece of evidence that challenges our understanding of how these cosmic wanderers behave. Stick around, because what happened next will blow your mind. If you're captivated by the cosmic enigma of 3i Atlas and want to see more mind-bending discoveries from the edge of known space, smash that like button and let the universe know you are watching. So let's dive into the latest revelations about 3i Atlas, the third interstellar object ever discovered. And believe me, the story keeps getting stranger with each passing day. We're about to explore observations from space telescopes you've probably never even heard of, detections that defy expectations, and chemical signatures that hint at processes occurring throughout our entire galaxy. By the end of this discussion, you will understand why this visitor is forcing scientists to rethink everything they thought they knew about objects from other star systems. The first breakthrough comes from a source you might not expect. Japan's space agency, JAXA, operates a mission called the X-ray Imaging and Spectroscopy Mission, and on board is an instrument called x a soft X-ray imaging telescope. What they captured will make you question what you thought you knew about comets. They detected 3i Atlas and X-ray frequencies for the very first time, and here's where it gets interesting. The image has an incredibly wide field of view extending 3 million kilometers around the object, and what they found was a faint emission glow stretching about 400,000 kilometers from the nucleus of the comet. Now you might be thinking, okay, X-rays from a comet, is that unusual? Well, yes and no, and here's where the mystery deepens. X-ray emissions from comets were first detected back in the mid-1990s with comet Hayakutake, and scientists have observed them in numerous comets since then. So faint X-ray emissions are actually an expected phenomenon. But here's the twist that kept researchers up at night. The other two interstellar objects we've detected, remember those? They did not emit detectable X-rays. So why would 3i Atlas be different? The answer might seem simple at first, but stay with me because there's more to this story. 3i Atlas has something the other interstellar visitors lacked, a large coma. That massive cloud of gas and dust surrounding the nucleus creates stronger emissions overall, dramatically increasing the chance of detection. But that raises another question, doesn't it? Why does 3i Atlas have such a prominent coma when the others didn't? What does that tell us about where it came from and what it's made of? The observation itself faced a challenge that plagues all space telescopes, something scientists call the zone of avoidance. You can't point these incredibly sensitive instruments anywhere near the sun. The risk is simply too catastrophic. One accidental glimpse of our star and you're looking at burned out instruments on a multi-billion dollar spacecraft. That's why this observation was made a month after 3i Atlas reached its brightest point at perihelion, its closest approach to the sun. Hubble couldn't observe it. James Webb couldn't observe it. They all had to wait, and the waiting must have been agonizing for the researchers. But when they finally got their chance, they made it count. The observation had an enormous effective exposure time of 17 hours, perfectly tracking Atlas's motion through the constellation Virgo. Think about that for a moment. 17 hours of continuous observation, following this visitor from another star system as it glides through space. What they discovered was that the cloud of gas around Atlas is interacting with the solar wind, that constant stream of charged particles flowing from our sun, and through an exchange of charge with the gas, the result is X-ray emission. From this painstaking observation, researchers were able to detect emission components of nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen from the object. These are the building blocks of chemistry as we know it, the fundamental elements that make life possible. And here they are carried across the gulf between stars by an ancient wanderer. Later, we'll discover why these chemical signatures matter far more than you might initially think. But the story doesn't end there, not even close. The next development comes from one of the most powerful astronomical instruments on Earth, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, known as ALMA, nestled high in the Chilean desert. 
What Alma detected is rather intriguing. And by intriguing, I mean it opens up questions about chemistry happening throughout our galaxy. They found methanol and hydrogen cyanide emanating from 3i Atlas. Now, before you jump to any conclusions, let me explain what this means. During the unimaginable amount of time spent in the interstellar medium, these molecules form on dust grains in the deep freeze of space. We're talking about temperatures just a few degrees above absolute zero, where chemistry happens at a glacial pace, atom by atom, molecule by molecule. Both methanol and hydrogen cyanide are hallmarks of solar system comets, but here they are, confirmed in an interstellar comet, proving that the chemistry of comet formation isn't unique to our solar system. Hydrogen cyanide is found commonly throughout the universe. Scientists have detected it in the atmosphere of Saturn's moon Titan, swirling in the hazy orange clouds of that distant world. It appears as a gas in the comas of comets, and here's where it gets fascinating. It's an important prebiotic chemical. Both hydrogen cyanide and methanol are precursor molecules to the complex organic chemical processes that lead to amino acids and nucleobases, the very foundation of life as we know it. What does this tell us? At least the very beginning of prebiotic chemistry is occurring throughout the galaxy. The ingredients for life, or at least the ingredients that could lead to life, are being manufactured in the frozen depths of space, carried by wanderers like 3 i Atlas, potentially seeding worlds throughout the cosmos. Think about the implications of that for just a moment. But this isn't rare chemistry, and that's actually the point. Methanol is seen in star-forming regions routinely. It's a building block for more complex chemicals like amino acids, the same amino acids found in carbonaceous chondrite meteorites that fall to Earth. These chemicals are linked to comets and asteroids, and scientists recently found sugars in samples from the asteroid Bennu. Methanol is even food for some microbes here on Earth, which use enzymes to convert it into formaldehyde, another important compound in prebiotic chemistry. The chemical profile of 3i Atlas revealed something interesting, something that made researchers pause and take a second look. The production of hydrogen cyanide was depleted in the direction of the sun, but the methanol increased in that direction. The methanol appeared to at least partially originate from the coma, that vast cloud surrounding the nucleus, whereas the hydrogen cyanide appeared to originate directly from the nucleus itself. Different sources, different behaviours, painting a picture of a complex object with distinct chemical zones. But here's the anomaly that really caught everyone's attention. The ratios of methanol and hydrogen cyanide are among the largest ever seen in any comet, with one exception, the somewhat anomalous solar system Comet C-2016-R2. 3i Atlas produces much more methanol than hydrogen cyanide, far more than typical comets. So this represents an interesting anomaly, but not a unique one. More observations are planned, and they should yield even more information about the object's chemistry, peeling back another layer of this cosmic mystery. And speaking of more observations, the next news story was expected, but still exciting. 3i Atlas has now moved far enough from the Sun to no longer be in the zone of avoidance for the Hubble Space Telescope, and we have a new image. When that image was captured on November 30th, Hubble and the object were separated by 286 million kilometers a vast distance, yet Hubble's powerful eye could still see it clearly. But the image is just the beginning. Hubble took more data that hasn't been released yet, including ultraviolet spectroscopy that should give us even more chemical data on Atlas. What secrets will that data reveal? We'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, something remarkable happened that you probably didn't hear about. The European Space Agency's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, known as JUICE, turned its instruments toward 3i Atlas. This interplanetary spacecraft was somewhat uniquely suited to the task compared to other spacecraft, and it was able to use five of its science instruments to make observations. But here's the catch, and it's a frustrating one for anyone eager for data. We won't see most of this information until February of 2026. Why the delay? JUICE is currently using its high-gain antenna as a heat shield, basically protecting itself from the Sun on its long journey to Jupiter. The spacecraft won't arrive at the Jupiter system until 2031, so it has to rely on a lower power medium gain antenna to send data back to Earth. This happens at a significantly lower rate than what the spacecraft will be capable of once it reaches its destination, but it did manage to image 3i Atlas with its navigation camera. 
This image was taken two days before the comet's closest approach to JUICE, at a distance of roughly 66 million kilometers. Pretty distant, right? And remember, a navigation camera really isn't designed for observations like this. It's meant to help the spacecraft know where it is, not to conduct detailed scientific observations. But JUICE does have a high-resolution camera, and we have to wait until February for those images, along with the other data it collected, including particle data, composition data, and spectrometry. The anticipation is almost unbearable. Now I want to address something important here, because there's been criticism from the public about the quality of images coming from NASA and ESA spacecraft compared to those from amateur astronomers. The amateur images are often visually more impressive, showing stunning detail of 3 i Atlas with its tail stretching across the frame. But before you judge the professional missions too harshly, let me explain something crucial that most people don't understand. Amateur astronomers are using instruments that were specifically built to observe faint objects like 3 i Atlas, with a few exceptions such as Hubble. Their telescopes are designed for this exact purpose. But consider the ESA mission ExoMars. It successfully imaged 3 i Atlas at its closest approach to Mars, and while the image might not look impressive at first glance, here's the stunning part. 3 i Atlas is 50,000 times fainter than what the imaging system was designed to image. That camera was built to photograph the bright surface of Mars from orbit, not to capture a faint comet millions of kilometers away. The fact that it pulled it off at all is remarkable, way out of the specifications of that camera. A typical telescope in the amateur astronomy arena, on the other hand, is very specifically designed to image faint objects. A good example is comparing the Hubble image, where you're only seeing the coma, to some of the amateur astronomers who have really nice wide field telescopes that can image both the coma and the entire tail in one frame. Different tools for different purposes, but both contributing valuable data to our understanding. Now I need to warn you about something that's becoming a serious problem. There has been a lot of incorrect information being spread on YouTube these days by AI channels and 3i Atlas has been a prime target. There was a channel featuring a digital version of Dr. Avi Loeb saying things that Dr. Loeb certainly never said, things that were badly incorrect. People started noticing that the clock in the background of the AI fake Avi always showed exactly the same time. Dr. Loeb contacted YouTube and got the channel taken down, but it shows how this problem is growing. You want to be careful with your sources for valid information on Atlas. Stick to known reliable astronomy channels made by humans and make sure when you're watching established sources that you're actually on their real channels because copying is only going to get worse with AI. Voices are being stolen, entire personas replicated, misinformation spread at an alarming rate. By the end of this video, you'll understand why getting accurate information matters so much when we're dealing with discoveries this important. But let's get back to the science because there's more to discuss. It's worth noting that there was another detection of hydrogen cyanide back in early September by the James Clark Maxwell Telescope. This observation was particularly interesting because when they repeated it a week later, the production of hydrogen cyanide had increased significantly. The object is changing, evolving, becoming more active as it interacts with our sun. And here's some news that should excite anyone following this story. Several days ago, 3i Atlas left the zone of avoidance for the James Webb Space Telescope. That means we can expect new images from the most powerful space telescope ever built very soon. What will Webb's infrared eyes reveal that other instruments have missed? What chemical signatures will it detect? The possibilities are tantalizing. Another intriguing development came in September when a study by Guo and colleagues made a fascinating discovery. They found that 3i Atlas may have passed within 3.3 light years of 25 known stars over the last 10 million years. Let that sink in for a moment. This object has been wandering through space for an unimaginable amount of time, potentially having close encounters with dozens of star systems. Yet it's not very likely that it passed any of them as close as it did our Sun. We can't know for sure, of course, but the evidence suggests something special about this encounter. So keep watching the skies. Keep following the updates. Because this visitor from another star system is teaching us lessons about the universe that we couldn't learn any other way. It's showing us that the cosmos is more connected than we realized, that the chemistry of life might be universal, that the building blocks of everything we are could be scattered throughout the galaxy, waiting for the right conditions to assemble 
into something remarkable. Three I Atlas came from somewhere out there, from a star system we may never identify, carrying secrets from a time before Earth even existed. And for this brief moment in cosmic history, it's ours to study, to marvel at, to learn from. Don't take that for granted. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to witness something truly extraordinary. Don't stop here. The universe is full of secrets waiting to be uncovered. Click on the next video and join us as we explore even more astonishing mysteries from the farthest reaches of space. The cosmos never stops surprising us, and neither should your journey of discovery. Keep watching, keep learning, and keep looking up, because you never know when the next cosmic messenger will arrive with stories from the stars.